All right, guys, I'm here with Jonathan over here, here in HD Harley Davidson. He is the top sales rep for Harley Davidson. And uh, I'm gonna ask Jonathan a few questions. So let's see what Jonathan has to say about HD in the Philippines here in Manila. Hello, I'm looking for Mel. Yes, Mel. That's like a sports star. Hello. Oh, you're Mel. Yes. Eli, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good, good. Just uh. Before we go back home, I wanted to stop by and, and meet with you guys and just see more about Harley Davidson here in the Philippines. Yes, okay, so. sure. And see, this yeah. is what remake. Yeah, this is my own product. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, we Everybody's sending me messages and calling me and texting me going, dude, why haven't you gone to Harley Davidson? Why haven't you? I came over here uh, when I first got to the Philippines. I just bought a sh this shirt, that's why I thought I'd wear it. <laughs> and I got a few because a lot of them like the uh, poker chips. Yeah. So I'm gonna get a few more before I leave. Mm -hmm. But that's what, you know, they want little memorabilia. Mm -hmm. But any one of my friends that ever come to Manila, they're gonna wanna stop by Harley Davidson. That's just how they are. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, I'm here with Jonathan from HD. And my first question to you is, what is your top selling Harley Davidson here in the Philippines? Uh, right now, Musa so uh, Sports or Family and Softail family. Uh, most, uh, among all the Softail family, Fatboy is one of the top models that we sell okay. a lot here. Now, do you have one here on the showroom? Right now, we're out of stock. We're, uh, we're just waiting for a uh, new batch, a 2022 model to come in. Okay, for the Softails? Yeah, for the Softails. Okay, so you sold out of the 2021s and you're waiting for the 2022? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so, what do you have on the showroom floor that's a really good seller though? Um, right now we have the Sportster S. It's a new model. Uh, it's, uh, it was introduced here in the Philippines uh, last November okay. 2021. Um, I have model here. Yeah, can we take a look yeah, at it? Yeah, sure. Okay. This is a Sportster S. This is the 21, uh, 2021 model. Okay. Um, it's a new breed. Okay. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit about the sports Yeah, it's it's a 12, uh, it's a 1250 engine displacement, um, liquid gold. Um, it it has a huge um, um, horsepower. It has 121 horsepower on a stock engine. Okay. Um, fat tire. Uh, uh, a different a different look for a sports family. They, okay. they call it like uh, um, a power cruiser. A power cruiser. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it looks a little. Is yeah. this a 2022 model though? Uh, 2021. 2021. So 2021. Yeah. Okay. So other than the the sports that you have here, Jonathan, is there any other bike that is a uh, Let's say what is your number two or three sales uh, for Harley Davidson that you have here? I see a few different Harley Davidsons here. Yes, um, we have here the Adventure. The Adventure, the okay. Pan American. Uh, okay. This is the special one. Okay. We don't have the standard one. What we all have here is the Pan American Special. Uh, this is also a 1250 engine. 
but this one has a higher uh, horsepower than the sports yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. This one is a uh, picture that you've never seen on, on mo most of our bikes. Yeah. Especially on, on the adaptive suspension, um, the adaptive headlight. Yeah, this is definitely road glides and soft tails are more of what Americans like. Yeah. It's, we, have, we have the road glide here. Yeah. So before I go on to the road glide, what is the the price? What is the retail price of the Pan American? The Pan American yeah, bike. Pan yeah. price starts at one million four hundred. Okay. It depends on the color. The the one million four hundred is the, for the vivid black, and if you go for like this one, a gauntlet gray, it's one million four hundred twenty. And if you go for the two tone, the Baja orange, uh, it will cost you like uh, one million four hundred forty. Okay. And what about the Sportster over there, the first one that we yeah, saw? The Sportster S uh, price start at one million thirty thousand. That's for the black. And okay. if you go for the midnight crimson. And the, the stoned wash, per, white, white pearl, it's uh, 1,050,000. 1,050,000, yeah. okay. And that's for the sports stuff, okay. All right, let's go on over here to the uh, road glide. Yeah. Now this is what we love in the US. A lot of friends that I know, uh, they love the road glide. So, Tell us a little bit about, about the road glide here in the Philippines, though. Yeah, um, the, the road glide, uh, actually the touring family is, uh, um, most of the owner of the touring family is living outside the Metro Manila. Yeah. Just, you know, the, the congestions of traffic, yep. the roads. Um, I have a lot of clients um, having street glide special, road glide special, living in somewhere in Pampanga, uh, somewhere in Batangas, they're all living on the the, the easiest part that they can access what? the expressway. Yeah, and where the roads are a little bit better. Yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> and not really, uh, not much traffic. Yeah, yeah. So, what size engine does your road glide have here? Uh, the road glide is six. Uh, the one one four engine is a sixteen eight uh, sixty five C. Eighteen, sorry, eighteen sixty five. 1865 cc's okay yeah, this is road glides are very common in the yeah. US we have here the road glide that we have here is the road glide special okay and the big question again what is the cost of the road glide here in the Philippines? Road glide is 1,700,000. 1,700,000. Yeah. Okay. So you're almost at 2 million on the road glide. <laughs> almost 2 million on the road glide right here. So. Okay, everybody, this is Kaiza, and she is one of the supervisors for merchandise. Hi, so what is your best selling item here as far as merchandise goes? Oh yes sir, in here in our uh, our country we have the tropical climate so we have the mesh one, one of our best seller with this suit to our climate. So this is mesh, uh, this is go through this one, this is we have the body armor in shoulder and elbow. Okay, so they got like a, what kind of material is there for the mesh. elbow? This is mesh. The yeah. mesh, okay, on the inside, is it Kevlar or what is it on the inside? Oh, it's just mesh also. It's mesh also, but I feel something hard in there, is that? Oh uh, yeah, because they have uh, body armor, like this one. Because this one is reserved already. Okay. This is one of our top selling... Top selling? Okay. Jacket. And style, of course. It kind of feels like Kevlar in there, but... Ah, uh, no, this one. This is our body armor. Oh, that's your body armor. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. It's inside here because one of our clients needs the body armor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this one, we have the body armor, which is suit 
small tight fit in any part of our jacket in shoulder and elbow. Okay, so this is for elbows and your yes, sir. shoulders. Okay, nice. Okay. Good little extra protection. Yes. So this this is a, a little extra protection so you guys don't get this the difference on your this, shoulder. Yes, the difference of this <laughs> one with the other, the other is plastic material. This okay. one is rubberized. Okay, yeah, I was I was riding around on my brother-in-law's little, he had a little 125 cc, so I was uh, going a little bit too fast. And then when I was, the, the brakes weren't that great on it. So then I got some road rash right oh, here. About, okay. Let me see. Yeah, look at the road oh. rash right there. Oh. <laughs> it's new. So yeah, it's new. new. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. so I left my I left my mark here in Harley Davidson because I was uh, riding really fast on this little 125 cc, but it doesn't handle that great. Oh, yeah. so. uh, oh, it's just a small one. It was just over there by my house. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I got some road rash guys here riding around <laughs> so yeah yeah so now she's gonna sell me on this right here so <laughs> the body armor so i don't get road rash no more <laughs> so Klaisa is pretty neat because Klaisa was telling me that harley davidson here in manila they actually send their employees to harley davidson university over in thailand so i think that's pretty neat they get to go to thailand harley davidson i guess they pay for the whole trip and everything right yeah. so they send them over there for is it kind of like customer service training and yeah. Okay, for so, more better service for okay. our clients. Better service for clients. Uh, Harley Davidson University in Thailand. Actually, so actually not that, uh, the strategy. We, we need a developed strategy how to come up higher. Okay, okay. So that one day you can be a manager or owner of Harley Davidson maybe? <laughs> That's so <laughs> Maybe they give you the tools. No, I mean anything's possible. You know, they say dream big. So yeah. Maybe Kleiso will be an owner of Harley Davidson one day. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> dream big i always say dream big yeah. nothing is impossible i'll tell you that so but Keep that's for experience yeah yeah that's that's great uh training and harley davidson if you're listening take these people to the u.s let them see how harley davidson runs especially in milwaukee send them to sturgis send them to sturgis. daytona yeah we're there every year we go to sturgis every year yeah, daytona I'll, I'll every year and, uh, go to sturgis for experience the yeah. right yeah so hopefully you get to go also to the U.S. and experience the real Harley Actually, Davidson. we have a dealer's meeting yearly before pandemic. So okay. our manager, top manager is also there to encourage us to meet our dealer's meeting. So do they, do they go to the U.S.? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. And have one ride, I think. In, in Sturgis or? No. Maybe in Milwaukee? Milwaukee. Yeah, in yeah, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. So yeah. But the they go also in Milwaukee and see you. Yeah, Sturgis roads are better than Milwaukee. <laughs> I like Sturgis roads. We go to Milwaukee too uh, in September every year. Yes. Um, but uh, there's a funny question I have to ask you. Sure. Why is it in Manila, or, or actually the Philippines in general, I see a lot of 125s and one, <laughs> 155 little Yamahas and Suzuki scooters around. What, what do you think the main reason? It's daily commute. It's a way to get around. You've seen the traffic. You've seen EDSA, I'm sure. You've gone around EDSA. Yep. <laughs> and with the recent trends, particularly with the lockdowns and the pandemic, it's the quickest way to go around. Yeah. You would be surprised. I, I think you've seen families of three and four <laughs> on a one, two, five. <laughs> I've seen more than Riding four, yeah. Up, yes. But then again, it's the economics of the, yeah. the situation. I, I think that the main part is that uh, Harley-Davidson is more of Western prices. A little bit. We've and, adjusted more or less. Yeah, and of course, uh, these little 125s and 150ccs are more of Filipino prices. Very much. Economically. Very much. Right. And well, in fact, that's true. But then again, some two years back, if I remember correctly, we started assembling Harleys in Asia. They're still made in the US. Yeah. So that we've managed to adjust the prices to something a bit more affordable. Okay. So we've done that recently since bikes come from Asia. Prices have gone down, more affordable. We get the bikes quicker. We get the supplies much quicker. So we get to sell to customers a lot faster with more choices. Okay, and they tell me that you currently own a, is it a Sportster? Yes. Okay. I what? have a um, 1997 Sportster S. Sportster, Sportster S, Sports, nice. yeah. 97. Yes, 97, that's correct. 
Nice. And yes. you love your bike? Absolutely. <laughs> Daily commute. <laughs> Ride to work. Best job in the world, my friend. <laughs> do you go riding on the weekends? Do you go riding anywhere? Well, I do as often as I can, but since I'm now a proud father of a nine-month-old boy. Oh, congrats. Thank you. So I'm trying to keep within, you know, work and home for the time being. Yeah, then I hear Every you. chance I, I get, it's out in the roads. What would you consider one of the best riding roads near Manila if you wanted to get away for a weekend? If you wanted to get away, um, there's down south, Tagaytay, most of the time it's a quick 30, 40 minute ride. Okay. Um, recently, a lot of riders have taken on up north. They go to Clark, Subic, quick breakfast ride, be back in time for lunch, be in good terms with the wife. <laughs> That's nice. the way to do it. <laughs> and, and you know, I took a uh, drive through uh, the mountains and went over to Infanta. It gets on. And, and guess what? Yeah, yeah. And That's I correct. saw a lot of bikers there. That was actually yes. the most I've seen Harley Davidsons on the road, which yes. wasn't a lot, maybe a handful. True, true. It's starting to grow. Uh, Quezon is also a popular ride destination. In fact, uh, one in Rizal, if you've heard of Marilake, the road twisties, uh, it's a bit of touch and go because there are a lot of riders, not very many are educated on safety. Yeah. So you gotta be in groups probably ride on off hours, some of them will go in the evening, so it's a lot safer to go. Because sometimes these small bikes get to be more adventurous, too daring, Yeah. on public roads, so it's not, it's not very good to see. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I've seen these bikers, these, uh, you know, I, I think they call them riders here, right? They call them, some of the Filipinos, they call them riders, right? So in the US, yeah. bikers. It's a big difference, you know the difference. Yeah, yeah, bikers. yeah, yes, so that's correct. I've seen a lot of them, uh, you know, it, and it's a two it's a two-way street it's a double-edged sword right because i've seen some of them driving crazy like you said getting too adventurous that's right and cutting people off and stuff and Very some much. of them are brave yes <laughs> but on the opposite end of that i see these cars buses trucks whatever right there's no courtesy and they cut them off they push them off to the side they just kind of bully their way between their bikes so it's probably it's <laughs> a bit of sense of i would do respect i mean Probably there's a bit of lack of education on safety, which is one of the things that we're very proud of, particularly with our right club, if I may mention, Party Owners Group Manila. Nice. And um, in the Philippines, it's more of a sense of getting to be where you need to go. It's that sense of urgency that sometimes they forget. I've, I've observed, I've been on the road for years. I, I travel to and from work on my Harley, happily. And I've observed them. I've tried to see it's more of a sense of urgency. A little bit of carelessness, yes, but up until recently, with all of these vloggers, with all of these campaigns, they're becoming a bit more conscious. Yeah. They're a little bit more, a little bit. They're improving a little bit, I'd say. Yeah. And but you know, in the U.S., for the for the most part, I mean, you still got your people out there that are a little bit crazy riders yeah. and drivers. But for the most part, a lot of Americans respect uh, yes. bikers, two wheelers, very much. And especially me, if I'm in my car or something, I see another biker. Right. Uh, I always give them his space. Yes. Uh, stay back. And right. So hopefully that that uh, you know it, it carries over here in the Philippines. Absolutely. Because there are tons of bikes I know. in the street. I know. Tons of them. <laughs> back in back in 2017, we've been very fortunate enough to ride in the U.S. We rode for four days, about a thousand and a hundred miles. Started nice. off in Oakland, Eureka, ended up in um, Seattle. I've seen what you've mentioned. Yeah. They respect bikes, uh, cars, and bikes give way. And I think it's one of the uh, mission of Harley owners here to show a little bit of courtesy on the road, much as you share the small roads. Cars now have bigger respects for bigger bikes. And we try to discourage being too braggish or being too proud about their bikes, but it's more of modesty. And I think that's one of the goals that we have, particularly for the right club and many of the motorcycle clubs. Uh, respect the road, share the roads, and just be courteous to everybody. Yeah, and uh, another question I have since you tell me you rode in the U.S., what do you think is more of the main difference, and where do you like riding better, the U.S., or do you like riding better well, okay. in the Philippines? Well, <laughs> given the choice, you know, U.S. is wonderful. It was an epic experience. Um, we're very new, we're first time to ride in the U.S. Uh, given the choice, it, it would be lovely to further explore riding in the U.S., riding Milwaukee. I had a chance to go to Milwaukee, but uh, in the Philippines, it's a challenge. Yeah. It's constantly a challenge. It's a learning experience. So we tell customers, it's best to go to ride school, take lessons, and even if you've got zero knowledge, that's the best start that you can get. You don't have your bad habits. Given a choice, I'd rather go for both. 
Yeah. There's so many places to explore in the Philippines. The Philippines is more challenging. The Philippines right. has beautiful places, but Absolutely. it's challenging. Yes. Uh, the infrastructure sometimes is not all there. I've been to roads where yep. it, it's it's hard. It's a challenge. It's getting Chal better, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's getting better. Yep. Uh, challenge is maybe an understatement in some of these roads. <laughs> some of these roads. You've got, you've got skills. You've got you know Pinoy's with, with really crazy skills, and more yeah. often, yeah. you know, we ask customers when they come in. I say, what do you ride? Where do you go? Says just here and there. I said, you know, it doesn't take 30, 40 minutes to get out of town. Yeah. You've got up north, down south, and as infrastructure is becoming a little better, there are more routes and more flyovers. You've seen the flyovers, and uh, there's probably more places to ride and go see the Philippines as well. Okay. So I want to ask you one other thing. Sure. Electric bikes, mm. Harley Davidson. Okay. What do you guys think about those? And do you think that you guys would carry them here? All right. Uh, we've had some inquiries. We've had some frowning faces on electric bikes, I'm sure, as you would know, most of the purists. Yep. Uh, we don't see them very soon, coming very soon, because I think uh, one of the uh, requirements, as we saw in the U.S., is to have the infrastructure to be able to charge and recharge your bikes. Uh, we're still far from that, except from some places in Manila. I think some of the uh, developments in Manila provide for small electric bike uh, charging system. Uh, might not be anytime soon, but then uh, you never know. Yeah. You never know. And, and you know what? It kind of makes sense here. I know that as uh, Harley Davidson, I right. mean, people want their fat boy or their mm. low glide. They're right. not thinking about getting an electric bike. But here in the Philippines, it actually makes sense because the gas is more expensive than in I the know. States, too. I know. I know. <laughs> there are a lot more. We've got a group of new riders coming up. They're more discriminating. They want the convenience. Yeah. They don't want too too much vibration. But yeah. then again, we get we try to get the best of both worlds. We've got those who still want the usual sound of the Harley Davidson, the potato potato. There are those who want it quiet, some who want it lighter, easier. But then again, you know, we talk to customers. Yeah. A Harley is not for everybody, as you'll probably agree. Of course. And we I try do. our best to fit. That's true. That's why you have a lot of 125s. But, <laughs> <laughs> but so, then again, you know, we try to fit at best. What yeah. customers would like. <laughs> well, well, thanks. I'm gonna. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm gonna show the the store a little bit too. More. Sure. True. And uh, I want to take you guys to lunch. Can I take you guys to lunch? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Mel was telling me that there's a place called the CB Cafe or something. Oh, like MB that. Mercedes Benz. Okay. Just, yeah. just right next building. Oh, okay, we okay. don't have to go very far. Okay. Thank you very much. And you know, I take this opportunity to invite everybody. Okay. Come see us along Edsa Green Hills. 22, 2022 models are coming soon. We will have test rides, events. Uh, we also have our uh, showroom down at BGC at the port. Nice. Come and see either one. We'd love to chat. We'd love to get to know you and hopefully ride soon. Great. Sounds Thank great. You. Thank Appreciate you. it. Absolutely. And your name was Jonathan. Luigi. Oh, sorry, Luigi. Jonathan okay, no, is Jonathan the younger is one. one. That's right. Okay, this is Luigi, like Mario and Luigi. Absolutely. Okay. Come and see me. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm over here with Kevin. And Kevin is the sales manager? No, the service manager. Service manager. Please. Sorry, Kevin is the service manager here. So, uh, Luigi told me a little bit about uh, the, the service department too. And he said you had like three or four technicians? Yeah, we have four technicians. Four technicians, yeah. okay. So, and, and that's great. He gave me the hours and everything like that. But I didn't know until you told me that Harley Davidson actually had uh, more branches. It's kind of like uh, mini branches or. Yeah, we have a satellite branch. Okay, so uh, not a satellite branch, a branch in BGC. Okay. Uh, but it has no shop uh, service department. Uh, okay, service okay. department is centralized here. And then uh, there is a dealership in Cavite. It's under Wiltec. And a dealership in um, Pampanga, San Fernando Pampanga. It's under Laos Group of Companies. Okay. And then uh, we have also uh, a part um, in. Cebu and in Davao under Radak. Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't even know I was in Davao. I didn't even know that there was a Harley <laughs> yeah. dealer there. If I knew, I would have gone there too. Yeah. Okay. So, and because of Odette, I wasn't able to go everywhere that I wanted to go. But maybe I, I'll try to see if I can visit. Well, I, I'm sure I can visit the one in, in BGC. Yes. I'll, uh, my time is limited now. I leave on February 8th. But uh, hopefully, I can go to Pampanga. And is that more of a showroom, or do they have services? They have services. Okay. And you, is it about the same size as this? No, it's uh, half the size. Half the size of this. Okay. I'll try to make it there. The Pampanga. I didn't know that uh, Harley Davidson had Pampanga also. 
So you got Pampanga, you got BGC, and this is your main yes. Harley in Manila right here. Okay. And then uh, the Val and Cebu. So you got five total? Like five Harley Davidsons in the Philippines. In the okay. okay, see, I didn't even know <coughs> that. So, okay. And one of the things that I had asked Luigi to uh, were people asking about um, rentals. So I hope in the future that rentals can come back because I got so many friends that want to come yeah. here for vacation, but you know they don't want to buy a motorcycle yes. and and use it for a few weeks. And then what are they going to do with it after? Yes, I know. You know. So uh, we're, we're we're planning to have those, but uh, uh, for now uh, there are some uh, bike enthusiasts that have many bikes. Yeah. Rent it out. No rent out. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, uh, would, is there anybody that you know that actually rents out Harley? Yes, yes. Oh, we yeah. have those. Okay. It's a package deal because the owner also has uh, hotels everywhere. In oh, wow. Uh, so, okay, so maybe you can give me that information also too. Well. Yes, yes. Because there's a lot of friends of mine that actually want to come, they're asking me about roads, where to go riding, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you know, and if they rent the bikes and everything too. So. Yeah. Okay, so I'll have to connect with that guy also and then uh, Talk to him. Filipino as well. Yeah, he's a Filipino. Okay. He's a rider also. A rider. So does he do the? Does he go with them and do tours? Um, yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll ask him if you give me the information. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the, ask him. Okay. And one other thing that I just found out is like Harley here actually has a, a hog chapter here. Yes. Is it just one hog chapter? In no. The uh, per dealer we have uh, uh, per dealer we have uh, our own uh, hog chapter. Okay. So for Manila, it's the BGC and the uh, the the Manila one here. Yeah, BGC and Manila has one. Is it one? Okay. Yeah. And Pampanga has another one. Yes, and uh, Cavite has one, and Cebu has one, and Davao. Okay. Okay. So Cavite, I forgot. Cavite has one too. Yeah. Okay. So the how many members do you have in the Hog chapters here oh, in Manila right now? now? I think we have. Wow, that's more than what I thought. And so we started 2013. Okay, so it's <coughs> the Hog Chapter here started in 2013? Yeah. Okay, and you have over 300 members. Yeah. Wow, I, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that you guys had a, a Hog Chapter. I was kind of curious. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's more than what I, I thought, really, 300. So um, another question I asked Luigi, maybe you can touch on it a little bit, is uh, why Filipinos uh, mainly here in the Philippines have these little 155s and 125s, you know, CC uh, oh. bikes here in the Philippines. So, <laughs> you know, the scooters, uh, it's, uh, it's a really small bike that, uh, and it's cheaper, cheapest bike that you, uh, you can uh, buy, you know, for 50,000 pesos. You know, yeah. You can get one. So, you think it's more economically fit for the Filipinos? Yes. Okay. Uh, for the lower class, I mean, uh, to go from point A to point B with the work for the works, right? Yeah. Not like uh, if you have those big bikes, uh, the Harley Davidson or uh, the Ducati or the BMW. Yeah. That's uh, a. <laughs> I've, I've seen a few, but not a lot. Yes. Yeah. A Ducati, I think I've seen like two or three of them. Uh, I've seen some ninjas. Mm -hmm. and, and some uh, but not that many majority I'd have to say like 90 95 percent of the Filipinos own like 125s and 125 cc's <laughs> yeah. here in Manila at yeah. least here in Manila well uh, you can see the big bikes every weekend yeah in the yeah. highways yeah uh, going south going to Tagaytay or going up north to Subic and Ang uh, Angeles to just have dinner, uh, breakfast yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the big bike owners are only weekend weekend warriors. Weekend warriors, yes. yes. So we got we got a lot of weekend warriors, but uh, you know what I like about the Philippines is that there's tons of Filipinos that have riding experience. Yeah. Even if they're on these little 125, 125 cc's, I always ask them, "Would you love to own a Harley or ride a Harley?" And it goes. That's my dream. <laughs> well, most Filipinos tell me that's my dream. If they had the money, they would own Harley Davidson, at, at least a sports store. So, uh, but yeah. that's why uh, <coughs> when the street bikes, yeah, the, the bikes, the Harley Davidson, the people, really, really sold. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Yeah, that's the cheapest uh, Harley Davidson. Yes. Anyway, Kevin, I, I it was great talking to you, and I hope that a lot of my friends will come visit 
Harley Davidson in the Philippines. I encourage them uh, to come out to the Philippines. I love the Philippines personally. Yeah. Uh, the Filipino people are so humble and kind. And uh, everywhere I go is so welcoming here in the Philippines. I, I went to the South and I plan to continue my trip in the South. When I come, I'm gonna come back November. Okay. So even in February, but I'm gonna come back November. And, and I don't know if you know uh, anything about me, but I'll let you know that I travel to motorcycle rallies across the US okay. every oh, year. Cool, cool. I go to Sturgis every year. Mm -hmm. I'm in Daytona every year. And so, and, but we do all kinds of different motorcycle rallies, whether I'm in Pennsylvania, Ohio, or California, Arizona, Nevada. I go all over the country from February to November, every year. We're in Sturgis every year. And I had the pleasure actually of meeting Karen Davidson this year. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know Karen Davidson. Okay, so Karen, I met Karen, really nice lady. I sat down, uh, had lunch with her too. And she encouraged me to come visit you guys too. Oh yeah. And she said, oh, that would be great. Let me know how everything is there. Yeah. So uh, if Karen's watching, Karen, I'm gonna do this video so that you guys can watch it too, back in Milwaukee. And uh, so far, everybody's been great here at Harley Davidson, so welcoming. Uh, Kevin also as well. He has a great name because that's my son's name too. <laughs> hey, great. <laughs> so hopefully that you guys watch it, especially Karen. Uh, they're doing a great job here in Manila. And I encourage everybody to come out to Manila and visit Harley Davidson. So we appreciate it. Thank you guys. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>